I'm Norm Poltonson, the publisher of the Business Journal. I'd like to spend a few moments with you talking about the auto bailout. Now, the first question you're going to ask me is, why are you talking about the auto bailout? It's more than three years old. And the reason I want to bring it up because we, the taxpayers, now know that it's going to cost us at least $25 billion. So starting with that idea, let's flash back quickly to the fall of 2008 when the Ford, Chrysler, and General Motors came hat in hand to Washington, D.C., begging Congress for a bailout. In the Bush administration, they found some TARP funds to, bail them, to help them over until the Obama administration could come into office. Uh, the Obama administration ended up giving them a total of $80 billion so that the companies could be viable. And the deal was that General Motors and Chrysler would declare bankruptcy. Now Ford was not part of this action because they had taken their own money, invested it, and were on track to be a brand new auto company that could be competitive. You have to keep in mind that the average auto worker before the bailout was making $73 an hour in hourly wages and benefits. Those uh, who were not in Detroit, for example, Toyota, Honda, Mercedes, BMW, their average was $47 an hour. So it gives you some idea of how uncompetitive the big three were in Detroit. Some uh, principles to review on this because I think they're critical to understand. If you're in a certain class before the bankruptcy, you should be in the same class coming out of the bankruptcy. If you're a secured creditor going in, you're a secured creditor coming out, which was not the case in uh, Chrysler. And there the secured creditors, those bondholders, took a real haircut. In the case of creditors who are in the same category, they're supposed to be treated equally. This was clearly not the case. General Motors came into bankruptcy with $30 billion owed. They walked out with $8.1 billion in, uh, in the recovery. And the United Auto Workers, however, who claimed $20.5 billion because of unfended health care costs, came out with 17.8, almost $18 billion. In the case of the uh, second lien creditors, the unsecured creditors at Chrysler, who were owed $7 billion, they came out with nada, zero, nothing. United Auto Workers walked away with over $9 billion. And finally, you're supposed to be in a competitive position as a corporation coming out of the bankruptcy because that's the whole purpose of a Chapter 11 reorganization. How much in the way of concessions did the uh, auto workers actually give? They did make some minor concessions in terms of performance bonuses being deferred, in terms of the amount of overtime they would get, in terms of getting rid of the jobs bank. Uh, they created a tier two for new, new workers who were making substantially less than the older workers. But those workers who were employed prior to the bankruptcy continued the same hourly pay, the same health care, and the same pensions. They made no concessions on those. How about equal treatment for the investors in terms of fairness? You may think everybody is a Gordon Gecko or they're a rich, rich, fat bank who cares whether they get uh, zapped in a bankruptcy or not. But how about the retirement fund for the teachers union in Indiana? Or the state police in Indiana whose retirement fund was wiped out because they held Chrysler's bonds? How about the Ford Motor Company that took its own money in 2007 and invested it heavily to turn around the company, which they did successfully? Now they're sitting there with, with the debt on the books that they have to repay the private investors. And on top of that, they're looking, Ford is looking at a competitor, in this case General Motors, who got an $18 billion tax carry forward. This is a loss carry forward to put them in, in a much more competitive position than Ford is. And in retrospect, as we looked at this uh, treatment in terms of the auto bailout, I'm not arguing whether it should have been done or it shouldn't have been done, but having been done, was it done fairly? And what happened to the taxpayers? Well, I opened by telling you the taxpayers are on the hook now for at least $25 billion. If you add up everything that was done for the United Auto Workers in this bailout, it comes to $26.5 billion of return that they got, which normally would not have happened during a bankruptcy. That's the difference between the taxpayers being on the hook and the UAW, being, UAW losing something or being on the hook. In the final analysis, you have to ask yourself, was this an auto bailout or was this a bailout of the United Auto Workers? I'm Norm Poltonson. Thanks for listening.